2001, I was asked for a job. And because I like change, I said yes, I accept it. So I became the assistant to the board of a bank. And every day, a huge stack of mail would be delivered on my disk, desk, physical mail. And imagine, more than one meter mail every day. So the first day in the job, I really freaked out. How should I digest all that mail and do my job too? So I came up with a way to deal with it. Triage. I divided my mail in three piles. And I gave every pile a different name. I chose a different label. I chose for colors. Red, green, and white. On the red pile, I put the very important letters. The green, just important. And the white pile went straight in the bin. Sometime later, a letter came from Greenpeace about chopping down rainforest to grow palm oil. So, I'm at a bank. What am I going to do with a letter about orangutans? Straight in the bin? But hey, I support Greenpeace. So, that morning, I put a letter on top of the red pile because I thought it was important for two reasons. One for the bank, as an investor, but it was also important to me, because I could satisfy the dormant activist in me by asking attention for the letter. All it took was one simple action from me, and I could save the rainforest. <laughs> yeah, right, that's not what happened. The board didn't think it was that important. But it sparked an idea in me. I wanted another job. I wanted a job entirely devoted to sustainability. And not with an NGO, but in the bank. The only problem was that the job didn't exist. So I decided, yeah, I make it exist. So I took my proposal to the chair of the board of the bank. And he immediately said, no, he dismissed the idea completely. So, what? He even offered me a job coach to find out what I really wanted in my job. But, uh, yeah, but I already knew. So I kept pushing and I kept stalking him with the idea. And a few months and some really, really tough conversations later, I had a job. I was appointed the first sustainability officer of the bank. And for the first time in my life, my heart was really, really in my job. And I learned a very important lesson. If someone says no to your idea, well, it might mean not yet. And at that time, I couldn't have imagined what this would lead to in my work. I've dug deep in the human rights responsibilities of the bank. I've been looking in our systems for traces of human trafficking. I've been talking to clients about their impact on society, their impact on people, on the environment, and I've been pushing them for change. I'm a banker, and I care about the human rights and the environment, and I believe that business, making money, and making the world a better place go together. And that caring for society is not something you only do in your spare time. So, what does that make me? Well, a tree hugger in a suit who doesn't think profit is a dirty word. However, my official job title is Head of Environmental and Social Risk Advisory and Monitoring. Yeah, exactly. It's a bit vague, it's a bit long. So I decided to introduce myself as Sustainable Banker, which is a label that really works well in the bank. But outside, here, after the financial crisis, what do you think? Yeah, 
indeed, it didn't go down too well. So, a label can be risky. It can feed your prejudice and make you feel restricted. Tree hugger, banker, sustainable banker. And yet, that got me thinking. If a label can trigger negative emotions, then why not turn it around and use a label in a positive way? And that's why I came up with another label for myself, corporate activist. And this turned out to be a good move, because now people are actually intrigued instead of being cynical. Now people see me like I want to be seen. So by changing my label, I've changed the conversation. And I know another guy who's been doing, who seemed to have doing, been doing the same, uh, been having the same idea as me. It's David Rosenberg, who was involved in the sustainable coffee label in the 90s, called Oots here in the Netherlands. And when I looked him up on LinkedIn, I discovered that he, that the label he's given himself is realistic optimist. Now I was intrigued, and I invited him to lunch for lunch to find out more. And while we were chatting about labeling, I realized that my label gives you three pieces of information. First, it tells you who you're dealing with. Who is this person? What's she doing? Then it tells you something about a specific, a specific skill of me. What do I bring to the conversation? Why am I special? And then it's forward-looking. My label is my foothold, but it also gives me a sense of direction. And it points you to where I want to go. So, I've experienced that by labeling what I want to be and who I want to be, I became what I want to be. And my label has given me more power and more courage to keep pushing for change. Also when it's very hard, and you can imagine sometimes in a bank it can be really, really tough. But my label gives me confidence. I want to live up to my label. And the rainforest? Well, I've not forgotten it. That mail still ends up in my red, on my red pile. But you know, I'm not unique. How about you? I want to leave you with a question to think about. Imagine white paper, your favorite pen in your pocket. If you were to create a label for yourself, what would you write down?